Wish they'd stop throwing eggs at us. These ponchos are going faster than I can knit them. Death threat, death threat, death threat, better air catalogue and... Oh, lovely, another death threat. God, well, these people never leave us alone. I don't know, I quite like better wear. Mind you, I'm still waiting for that free ink vat they promise with everything. Ink vat? It's including vat. Oh, right. Well, whatever it is, it hasn't showed up. Honestly, these protesters. What did you do with the other uh, death threats, Karen? I put them in the death threat incinerator. We don't have a death threat incinerator. Yeah, we do. It's under there. Just put them in, press the button, there'll be a big explosion, there'll be a bit of smoke, and then it'll ding. I think that microwave might want looking at. Right. I've had a word with those protesters. I've had it up to here, and I've told them if they keep throwing the bloody eggs at me, I'm going to super glue red hot, hard boiled eggs under their bloody hippie armpits. See how easy you find it to wave your placards about then? <laughs> I think I made myself pretty clear. Did they stop throwing things at you? Eventually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know, I really am beginning to enjoy this protest. Look at that. Seven eggs I caught this morning. <laughs> It was like lightning. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh well, probably best. I've had eggs Benedict every night this week. <laughs> I haven't defecated for days. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. I think this is for you. I got it by mistake. It's like ten pounds worth of stamps on this brick, Minty. Yeah, bricks are heavy, aren't they? <laughs> They posted it. It landed in me stamps. I am sick of these bricks through my window every morning. It's dangerous, it is noisy, and there's a draft. Don't worry, another couple of days you'll have enough to break yourself in. No, I need natural light. I'm like Cress. <laughs> That's what I've always said about you. You're saying I'm like Cress. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Thank you, Minty. I love it out there. They're beginning to form themselves into some kind of tribe. I'd love to make some sort of study of them. I'd love to make some sort of umbrella stand of them. I mean, their mouths are big enough. You could just hollow out their heads. Oh, Brian. <sighs> <laughs> All right, six words for you. Batons, horses, tear, gas, rectum and candle. Are they any use to you? If I was doing the crossword in the Daily Mail, they might be, Brian, yeah. <laughs> six down, F something off. Flint off. <laughs> At least they're not idling about. They're standing up for what they believe in. <laughs> standing up for what they believe in. They've got no idea what we do in here. I've got no idea what we do in here. You've got no idea what they're doing anything. I don't know about that. There you go. Second post. No, it's not funny this, you know. I could be standing here dead right now in my own shoes. <laughs> and... I'm out of stamps, and I do not want to have to do an emergency post office run because cashier number six, please, mentally undresses me with his eyes. <laughs> Must have some strong eyes to get that jumper off. No, you are right. We should look into upping lab security. We don't actually want them breaking in and, you You're know... Seeing me in the nude, no. <laughs> I, was, I was going to say, and wrecking the place. You often in the nude in the office? No. Why, do you want me to be? <laughs> not really. What are you saying? Oh. <laughs> You know what? You know, I could bring in some tasers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I give you any security, you will have no incentive to get rid of these protesters of yours. It's inconveniencing the entire college, and it's becoming a manky filth trap out there. You know, there are Polish tiring cops and discarded falafels everywhere. <laughs> Well, now, that bit is my fault. Somebody set up a sort of prefabricated food kiosk-type arrangement out there. Oh, well, if it wasn't for my prefabricated food kiosk-type of arrangement, I wouldn't have the revenue to clear up all of that mesh. <laughs> Dean, as far as I can see, there are more protesters by the day, and they... Do you want, do you want to get that? Why don't you like the noise of it? <laughs> it? Might be somebody important. I know. Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know how you 
can take that chance. There are a lot of things you don't know about me, Dr. Binnemann. <laughs> Did you know, for example, that I have always wanted to go into a newsagent and spend 400 pounds just to see the look on the man's face? <laughs> You have mentioned it once or twice, yes. Yeah. Lose the casters, keep the brooch, and get it ahead. Go. <laughs> if there is one thing I have learned in my many years of academic administration, it is that the best way of solving problems is by negotiating. People like to negotiate. Oh, no one likes to negotiate. Everybody likes to negotiate. Well, maybe a few people might like to negotiate. <laughs> Most people like to negotiate. All right, some people like to negotiate. Done. Some people like to negotiate. Ah, you're a hard man, Dr. Benjamin. Good negotiator, but a hard man. So take your hard manness and your good negotiatorness to the table and see what these people want. They don't want anything, do they? That's the point. They just like being angry about things, as far as I can tell. Look, there's one, two, three no blood for oil placards, and that old lady there has been burning a bra on a daily basis. Oh, well, that's a big bra. Yeah, I think they're using the charcoal to keep themselves warm at night. That's a good tip. Look, I can't negotiate if there's nothing to negotiate. No, there's plenty to negotiate. Well, maybe there are a few things to negotiate. There are many things to negotiate. All right, there are some things to negotiate. No! There are some things to negotiate. You see, Dr. Bieneman, it was not that hard. Hmm? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm expecting an important phone call. <laughs> what? Nobody likes to negotiate. Clint, I'm not getting into this again. <sighs> it doesn't matter. I've got to do it, and we're going to have to look at our own lab security. Yeah, I don't see what would be wrong with me being in charge of that. Yeah, I know you don't, and that's exactly the problem, isn't it? <laughs> oh, they'd be sorry they ever messed with us. Oh, hey, man, why have you got that snow globe in a pair of tights? I'll tell you when you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> that will be your reason there, Brian. If you can hear me over the modified drill. <laughs> and there's another one. It doesn't matter. Kara's dealing with it. Oh, well, no disrespect, Cara, but what's your pet Oompa Loompa going to do to defend this lab against militant crusties? Something that isn't going to end up with us having to sneak their bodies out in a rolled-up carpet. <laughs> carpet. You amateur. <laughs> Lino is wipe clean. It was just the one reason you wanted, was it, Brian? I'm working on some iris scanners. Brilliant. So where have you got them from? I made them. I had bits that were lying around the lab. Not, uh, not from bits we were using for anything else in the lab? No. Who stripped my telescope down? <laughs> Don't look at me. Bloody hell. I was in the middle of observing that tribe of protesters. They've started marking their territory. Uh, no, I think they're just not allowed in to use the toilets. No. <laughs> All right, so how do these iris scanners work, then? Gonna show you now. <laughs> the lens inside that slot scans the area around the pupil, known as the iris, and then you look your eyes through that visor that I took from some retina scanners that were lying about. <laughs> then the machine scans your irises and lets you know whether you're you or not. OK? And if you're you, it'll let you in, and if you're not you... Will the walls come in and crush you? Like a Sharon fruit in a G-clamp? <laughs> no. <laughs> they won't as it happens. Funny. <laughs> They won't let you in, and it'll just beep really loudly. It's just like anything else. So all you need is one of these each. <laughs> so, um, what's wrong with our own eyes? I couldn't find the right size lens. We're just going to have to make do for the moment. And if it happens to be dark when we come in, Here's where we take down science! Take it right down! Free the monkeys! <laughs> <laughs> they really are the most fascinating creatures. It was only a prototype. 
Every system's got its drawbacks. Yes, but unfortunately the drawback of this particular system, Cara, is that the soft-headed, bat-wielding lunatics I have to go and negotiate with now either think that we've genetically engineered a great big boogly-eyed monster or worse, as far as they're concerned, we're testing perfume on one. <laughs> Whatever you test on monsters. Toothpaste. Toothpaste? Terrible breath, great big teeth. Oh, that reminds me. I still haven't called my cousin Beverly back. <laughs> what am I going to say to them? They are not going to be happy. Protesters like not being happy. Really? Nothing makes them happier. <laughs> they must take that. Oh, absolutely. So, they must love that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Well, that's a win-win situation, isn't it? Yep. So they've lost whatever happens. Exactly. Lucky bastards. Yeah. Oh, it's like being in a room full of my grand. <laughs> Cara, listen, we're going to have to find a way of making this recognise our own eyes. Could we not beef up the light beam on it or something? <laughs> God, could you not... Tone down the light beam on that thing or something. I told you, didn't I? Now look what's happened. It's completely fried me contacts out. <laughs> Gonna have to wear these now for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh. Well, you better make sure your precious iris scanners can get through them then, haven't you? Oh. Identity confirmed. See, it's perfect. Oh, hang on, I can't see a thing now. <laughs> huh? Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> it's lasered me eyes, right? <laughs> Will you recognise your irises now? Oh. <laughs> easy come, easy go. <laughs> Dr. Beanie, man. Oh, Minty, could you use the iris scanner, please? I think I'm putting my eyes near that thing. I've not cried since 1978. I'm not going to start now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all winking at me? I can't be winking. We're using both our eyes, aren't we? Why, can you not wink enough with just the one? <laughs> anyway, I've got a protester for you to negotiate with, like you asked. I've, uh, put him in your office with a cup of lilt. Thank you, Minty. <laughs> oh. Ah, thank you for coming in. My eyes can't take much more of this. You see, this is why we test things on animals. <laughs> Speeding man. Identity confirmed. How'd it go? It was a disaster. Oh. Minty managed to find me a protester with a chronic blink on him. He thought I was mocking him. <laughs> he said, and I quote, I was violating his eyelids' right to move as they please. <laughs> I was getting away with it for the first little bit because we were in sync. It was only when I sneezed, <laughs> threw my timing out, he cottoned on. Here, yeah, have some of that. Thanks. It's Optrex. I know. Mmm. Lovely salty Optrex. Professor John Mycroft, identity confirmed. <laughs> oh my God, Kari, you've blinded him. Or turned him into a dog. Oh, my goodness, there's two of them. There you are, Wesley. Get over here. <laughs> Damn you, Wesley, thwarting my authority. Very well. Wesley, stay. <laughs> authority reasserted, I think. Cock, do you know, I don't know which is bigger, the protest outside the gate 
or the queue for the prefabricated food kiosk. It's hard to tell because the, the uh, anti-vivisection buses <laughs> keep driving in and blocking the view. When was the last time we cut up an arrow? Well, I had this hamster. For work. Oh, OK. <laughs> This one's got a piece of string trailing off it. Pull it. See what he says. <laughs> You've not taken one of their dogs, have you, Prof? They'll storm the place. Not taken, borrowed. I thought he'd be of use getting through the iris scanners. How's that going to work? Well, we've got similar eyes, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Have you not noticed? They comment on little else out there. Right. I declare this security system officially a failure. Oh, I'll drink to that. You'll drink to anything. Thank you very much. Mmm. Is this Optrex? <laughs> I know. Brian gave me some earlier. <laughs> I can't get enough of the stuff. <laughs> OK, so we're going to need a new security system and we're going to need it quickly. Any ideas? Oh, what Which about? don't involve stripping people naked and whipping them with an inner tube. I wasn't going to say whipping. <laughs> I was going to say violating, yeah. If you want a security system, why don't you just turn the motion detectors back on? Don't know why you switched them off in the first place. That plant's plastic, you know. Well, there's no water in this. <laughs> and then, understandably, he stormed off when he thought I was taking the mickey with the blinky. Ah! Mickey van der Blinking. <laughs> he was my first love. He now drives a hovercraft. It's getting personal, Dean. There are placards and sheets with my name painted on them. If I step outside, they'll string me up. Have a piece of cake. Okay, thank you. Well, all dark specialities. I have Kleckerfelder, Flanje Machel, Stroop Brod, and Hadden, 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 Hadden. <laughs> What do you think, hmm? Huh? Well... I, I think it needs a little less licorice and a little more cheese. <laughs> well, I would agree with your first point, yeah, certainly. You know, maybe... Maybe I'll make another batch. Hmm, why... don't you... try... this one? Mm. Hmm? You know, don't worry too much about offending that... Customer. Customer? Mm, don't worry too much about offending that protest. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. It just sounded that way because I'm talking with your mouth full. <laughs> I am sure a blinky blinky protester storming out was just bad luck. <laughs> yes, there are hundreds of people out there chanting your name right now, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, Elton John seems to like it. Well, oh, no, 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 no. Shh. You find another customer to negotiate with and try not to blinky-blinky when you're talking with him. <laughs> now, you have my cake and eat it. That'll be three pounds. Pay my secretary on the way out and go. <laughs> what you have to understand is that what seems normal to one culture or social group will seem unusual... Oh. <laughs> or perhaps even shocking to another. Different actions mean different things to different groups of people. Yeah, we get the principle of it. All I'm saying <laughs> is that some things are rude in any culture and firing human we out of a super soaker is one of them. <laughs> I'd probably just run out of eggs. <laughs> I couldn't find any in the co-op last night. And I really fancied a fried one for me tea. I had to ring out one of my cardies in the end and have an omelette. <laughs> Brian! Oh, this is stupid! <laughs> Why did you let her? Why are the motion sensors up to the lights as well? Now we have to shuff our hands in the air in 30 seconds. I like it. It firms your buttocks. <laughs> I mean, motion sensors. I could get round them like that. Well, they'd see that. <laughs> All right, I could get round them like... <laughs> that. <laughs> you see, it's all about disguising the movements of body heat. Uh, sorry to disturb you, dark sit, but I've got another protester for you to negotiate with. He's in your office. He is filthy. 
I've had to put overhead projector transparencies down to protect the chair, and he's already fidgeted a graph off with his arse. <laughs> There's a phrase I wasn't expecting to hear when I woke up this morning. <laughs> no, it isn't all right, Minty. It's catastrophic. If anything, he was even more offended than the first protester. He only had a little tick about him. Involuntarily throwing your arms in the air every 30 seconds isn't a little tick. <laughs> I can't believe you missed that when you went and got him. Hey, it's not my fault, is it? They were all doing a Mexican wave at the time. <laughs> in fact, I think it was him that set them all off, actually. <laughs> Did you at least manage to calm him down before he left? Wow. Well tried to explain it was all a mistake, but he just seemed exasperated, threw his arms in the air and left. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> God, that reminds me, I've got a bit of potato to put in. I have just walked all the way out the sterile room, along the corridor, past your office, and into here. You looking for a heart? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. The point is, I walked all that way and not a single light came on, proving you can foil the motion detector. <laughs> and do you need the tin to disguise the body heat, or could you come as a lion or a scarecrow? <laughs> motion sensors. The point is, Alex, is the motion sensors are flawed and need replacing. Along with one or two other things. <laughs> You're just jealous cos I'm invisible. <laughs> How are the undercover field observations coming in, Prof? Well, the clothes could do with a bit of softener, but it's tremendous fun. There's over a thousand people out there now. They've set up a big stage and they're all singing and eating this marvellous harden, 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 harden. <laughs> Would you like some? Um, the licorice cheese balance is almost perfect. So it's turned into a big festival out there. Is that, actually, that's a relief, to be honest. No, 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 no. They're still furious. It's a proper protest festival. Joan Armour trading's out there and everything. <laughs> yeah, she, she was just on singing a song about you when I left. Well, I like Joan Armour trading. Cool, she doesn't like you. <laughs> She's selling these. <laughs> you can have that. I've got to get back. Cold player on next, and I promise Gwynny some champagne. <laughs> Down with that lick beanie man, kill him with a brick. Smash his stupid teeth in the great big gangly prick. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm dead. You know, Alex, I think you're blowing this completely out of proportion. Cara, there are a thousand people out there singing along to Joan Armour trading. That hasn't happened since 1988. You really don't have to worry till they start burning effigies of you. <laughs> what are they doing? OK. That's a funny lark. It's all long and very, very thin. It's the sort of guy looking with your face on it. <laughs> Listen, Alex, come on. What are you always saying to me? They don't do stain devils for frog's piss. You should just throw that top away. <laughs> no, I was thinking about the other thing. In ballooning isn't a word? No! Look, do you remember that time you went to the zoo yeah. and I sneezed my sunglasses off into the ostrich enclosure? Do you remember it? <laughs> oh, they can get some speed up. They've got a very nasty streak, those things. Vindictive. They are, they're vindictive. Their eyes are really close together. <laughs> Mind you, their heads are very small. <laughs> so it's not like they've got a choice. <laughs> Although some animals have had the decency to evolve stalks so they don't give you the wrong impression. What, what are you saying to me now? 
I don't know, Alex. I've lost my thread. You know, you have got a point, Cara. Have I? Yeah. You went back in and you got those sunglasses, didn't you? And after surgery, you regained the use of your hand, didn't you? <laughs> and what you learnt from that was not to give up. No, what I learned from that was not to listen to you about how easy it is to climb up chicken wire. <laughs> you got over it in the end, didn't you? And that's the point. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get over my own personal chicken wire. Thanks, Cara. Minty, could you... Don't you knock you? I could have been standing here naked. <laughs> you don't have a door. Maybe I'm an exhibitionist. Oh. <laughs> Just, can you go and get me a protester, please? No. Miss Spud's all raw. Oh, I see. No, I don't see. What, is that a euphemism? Do I look like I've got time to be going round all day making up euphemisms? <laughs> I've got a raw potato here. All right, um, cook it. I can't. Every oven in the place is stuffed with big Dutch cakes. How do you think that makes me feel as a woman? I've... <laughs> I've no idea. Look, I'll microwave the potato in the lab for you. If you just go and get me a protester, any protester, the first protester you see, I don't care who they are, I don't care what they look like, I don't care what part of their body they haven't got the run of, they can have more ticks than a Chinese phone book, I'm going to negotiate the bejeez right, out of them. All right, all right, but no funny business. Yep. And don't go touching that potato with your fingers or licking it, cos I'll know. I'll know by your face. Yes, just go. Don't touch! <laughs> Dean, what are you doing? I'm sorry? Look, you're not making it very easy for me to get rid of these protesters with your prefabricated food kiosk. Look, Dr Beaneman, I don't know who you are or what you are talking about, but I am not the Dean. Have you ever seen the Dean wearing a hat? No. Well, I can't be me then, can I? No. I am not the Dean and that is all there is to it. Now go away before I cut your funding. <laughs> I'm climbing my chicken wire, Cara. Mm, well, it's easy when there isn't a great big beak nipping at your thumb. <laughs> this microwave is full of cakes. Has the Dean been in here? No, some woman in a hat. <laughs> that was the Dean. You can't have been she was in a hat, I told you. Maybe it was a disguise? Well, it weren't a very good one. She looked exactly like herself. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference, to be honest with you. Take the foil off that. How could you tell it wasn't the Dean, then? <laughs> I told you to take the foil off. <laughs> Dr Beanyman? Yes, Minty? I've got Joan Armour trading for you. <laughs> oh, fuck. Comedy next on BBC Two from Still Game and later Damon Albarn and Lauren Laverne have a bit of an eggy moment in the culture show Uncut at 11.20.